Hi there, it's Jeff here with another in our revision videos on key topic areas. This time, let's spend a few minutes looking at perfect competition. So what is a perfectly competitive market? Well, it's a market that is essentially a theoretical model, an idealized model of a market where prices, market prices reflect perfect mobility of factors of production, a freedom of entry and exit, full access to information by all participants, homogenous products, and no one buyer or seller has any advantage over another. So when we look at perfect competition, we're thinking about key assumptions, the sort of building blocks of the market. First of all, the products are homogenous. They're all perfect substitutes. They're the same. So each supplier in the market is making a standardised product. Secondly, that all firms have equal access to scarce factors of production, land, labour, capital and technology. There are many buyers and many sellers, so we don't think about monopoly power or monopsony power in this market. Sellers act independently of each other. Uh, and there is also, this is critically, free, costless entry and exit into the market. That's going to affect the long-run equilibrium in terms of price, output and profit. Because each firm is producing the same standardised product, the demand curve for each individual firm or supplier is perfectly elastic because there's no differentiation between products. So no one firm has a downward sloping demand curve. There's perfect knowledge in the market. Buyers and sellers know the price and the standardised quality of what's being sold. And with the default assumption is that each firm uh, aims to maximise profits, where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. There are one or two markets that come close to being perfectly competitive. They don't necessarily meet all the assumptions that uh, we've just gone through. So things like betting on a race course, you might, have, might go to a horse racing and find 15, 20 bookmakers literally cheek by jowl side alongside each other and oftentimes when you go to the race course before before the next race you often see the odds are very similar because of course there's so much information it becomes obvious if one bookmaker is offering different odds uh, to another you might have been to a big flower a uh, big wholesale market selling flowers or fresh fish or something so oftentimes or, or vegetables with these those big wholesale markets are highly competitive so things like big, uh, big street markets, fruit sellers, there might be small differences in quality and provenance of the product, but oftentimes they're pretty homogenous. And uh, one of my colleagues famously argued that if you went on holiday in Spain and you went down a particular street, you'd be faced with a choice of 15, 20, perhaps 30 bars, uh, all of which essentially are identical, <laughs> selling the same overpriced alcohol. Now, in a, in a perfectly competitive market, we're going to walk through the diagram together. Here. How is price and output established? The key in this market is to have two diagrams. On the left-hand side, the market, so market supply and demand. On the right-hand side, a representative firm in the market. Obviously, there are many firms, so you can't show all of them. So you just choose a representative firm. So let's take the side of the market first. The market supply and demand. Uh, market demand is downward sloping. So if you take the market as a whole, that's the sum of all individual consumer demand. That will be downward sloping. And likewise, the market supply curve is the horizontal sum of all the firm's supply curves. So the market price is set by market forces, P1. And then if we go across to the right-hand side, I've put in some uh, superimposed some cost curves on there for you. Some marginal average cost for the firm. Uh, what happens is that the firm is a passive price taker. So each firm takes the price set by the market. So once we've found P1, we draw right across to the right-hand side. And a price-taking firm is a firm that does not have the ability to influence the price of the good or service they're providing. So in perfect competition, firms are price-takers. They must accept the prevailing market price. They can't charge more or less because uh, they take the market price as given. So that P1 set by the market becomes the firm's demand curve, average revenue curve. And because average revenue is constant, marginal revenue will equal um, average revenue. Okay, So AR equals MR in perfect competition. Profit maximising firm will produce an output at Q1 where uh, marginal cost meets marginal revenue. And in this situation, there's the unit cost C1 of producing this output. So the shaded area is the total economic profit made in the short run. So in theory, uh, if the market price is high enough, lots of firms in the market might be earning supernormal economic profits.
Now, will all firms in perfect competition necessarily make a profit? Well, it depends. Not really. It depends on what their costs are. They're likely to have similar costs. But often at the margin, some firms might be loss making. Others might be making more profit at the same market price. It does depend on cost. Um, if the market price is lower than the average cost, firms will incur an economic loss. We actually call it sub-normal profit. The market price is higher then firms will earn an economic profit. So the market price might actually be quite low. So here's another example here. The market price could be low. There it is, P1. And at that price, we take it across. That becomes the demand curve for the firm. At this price, P1 is below the average cost for this firm. And again, the firm here would aim to maximise profits or essentially minimise losses. That's what it's going to try to do. And it does that at Q1. The charging price, P1, but there's the unit cost, C1. So in this situation, the firm is making a loss because the market price has been set, which is below its unit cost curve. So this is a firm which is making a loss in the short run. Now, it can't make a loss in the long run. It has to make a decision about whether to stay in the market. If most firms are making losses, what would you expect to happen to the number of firms in the market? Well, the answer is if most firms are making losses, then you'd expect to see net loss of firms, the net withdrawal of firms from the market. Whereas if firms are making strong profits, price above cost, well, the number of firms operating in the market is likely to go up because they'll be attracted into the market, into the industry, by the prospect of making those profits. So key takeaway points in the short run, each firm is a passive price taker. In that respect, there's virtually no price competition in the market. You tend to think about markets where there's price wars and, and uh, one firm charges a bit more, a bit less than somebody else. The reality is in perfect competition, we don't see much of that at all. Each firm faces a perfectly elastic demand curve. The profit and loss depends on the market price uh, set against the short run costs of the seller. And the number of firms in the market will adjust, will change in the long run, depending on the profits that are being made. So this adjustment to the long run, let's assume, for example, we're in this situation here where the firm is making super normal profits in the short run. This is the diagram we had just a couple of minutes ago. In this situation, uh, the number of firms is likely to go up. New firms will be attracted into the market by the prospect of making a, a high profit. And of course, we assume in the market there are no barriers to entry. Now, if new firms enter the market supply curve will shift out to the right because there are now more firms. In theory, this drags the price in the market down. If new firms enter, the market price falls from P1 to P2. Well, I'm skipping a couple of steps here, but the market price will drive down. Uh, competition drives prices down towards P2. Now, we know at P2, uh, the firm is a passive price taker. Therefore, it has to accept price P2. And that, in fact, is also a profit maximising equilibrium. If that's the price, uh, that's the new demand curve. Uh, at output Q2, they are maximising profit. But this time, the price they're charging, P2, equals the average cost of production. So the entry of new firms drives prices down and the super normal profits get competed away. Uh, this is an important insight into many scenarios, both domestic and international. If we make a market more contestable, more competitive, by free trade deals, for example, or technologies allowing new firms into markets, oftentimes we often see the price for the good or service coming down, possibly in nominal terms or possibly in real terms, depending on inflation elsewhere. So there we go. That was a quick look at the short run and the long run in perfect competition. Thanks for joining in the video. Take care and uh, we'll see you sometime soon.